1000 RPM first cut. I'm not sure, I've got 0.15mm but just see. According to tarmac tools, you're not supposed to run the face mill down the centre of the part that you're cutting. So I've offset it. finish that were 0.15 mil deep running at 1000 rpm it did get sparks towards the end beginning it didn't though did it which makes me believe that this tool holder is not quite as hard it's a different one so we'll uh, persevere and I'm going to slow the machine down to 750 and then we'll see what happens and maybe do a pass at 500 I don't know and then I maybe have to take it higher. I don't, we'll give it a try, see what happens near enough. Right, so, oil on. Fire it up. I'm winding this by hand, not with the um, power feed. So that's 1015, I'll drop that to 750. it's showing nearly 40 that's on the face of this because it is shiny and I've, I've, heard, I've heard people say that you get reflection on shiny surfaces and that's off the shiny that's already gone down it's going down rapidly 
tool tip, 19 degrees, tool tips at room temperature. So yeah, the carbide tips, no matter what I do, don't, don't seem to change. What finish we've got. Lovely finish, well lovely-ish, it's, it's like a mirror. But according to Tomac tools, that's what face cutters do. Do I slow it down some more? Try it slower. I'll go back and do my same depth of cut. Which is 0.15. I have been suggested by somebody to take it higher. But just at the moment I'm not going to because it makes my shin shout his head off. It's only a 370 kilogram machine, so what's that, a third of a ton? I suppose it is quite heavy, but not in where a Miller machine is heavy, it's not, is it? So I've got that, so let's fire it up and slow it down some more. Seven seventy one, so just give it a five hundred. No, maybe six hundred. Six or nine. Let's see what happens. So I'm expecting. It's possible, you know. Let me just see what frequency that's on. Mm, that's running at 31 hertz, so it's probably going to reduce power. And maybe to do this run properly, I need to um, alter gearing on belts if this is going to try and stall. Be real careful here. That's a two thou feeler gauge. I can just get it in. That one two number four, one. That's number two. I can just get it in. Number three. Just get it in. Number four. Slips in that easy. So that cutter is slightly higher than the others, so let me try. That's a, a two thou, I've got a one thou, a two thou, I've got a one, no, that's no good. Run again. I can just get that on the edge. I can get that on the edge, easier. I could just get that on the edge, so the fat, the two across from each other are about the same. And that's about the same. So the, the one that's is this one. That's the one that's slack. And I've got point point oh two and oh two five. So that's two and two and a half. That's, is that four four and a half thou? Point point oh six millimetre and point oh five millimetre. That's two and a half thou and two thou. Four and a half thou. Five thou, let's we'll go with a five. Ah, and it's just gripping five thou up. So that is about is it a thou high? The other two we're using. So that tool, that tip is perfect, is not as good as the three are pretty good, one is not.
24. Oh my god. 50 degrees, that tip. Nineteen. What's happening? That tip is definitely hotter. Those are all twenty four. One tip's hotter. Tells you something, doesn't it? 24 degrees. The work's not too bad. It's still got that marking from before. I haven't got down to that yet, so I must have dug in quite a lot. Finish is acceptable, it's not bad. So that were a, a pass with the, um, the import cutter. But that was one I bought off eBay. It was 20. I think it come with 23 pound complete, the whole thing. Return cut. I did drive it, I must admit that uh, pass a bit faster. It seemed to be able to cut quicker because there's only four inserts, but it's probably why. tell from that that uh, the metal were expanding, the, d the depth of cut were getting deeper. I need to let that cool a second and, uh, and, and take it back through again but uh, it's showing 41. Uh, I'll just let that cool a bit. But I am going to try that uh, 6 cut. I've got two actually, let's give them both a look at. There's that one that's got the round cutters in. Looks nice. Star Trekky. And there's that one that's got a new set of cutters in. They're brand new. We'll give that one a go as well, but they're 63 mil, so I don't know what's going to happen. Probably the machine will take off. Right, I'll run through it. Frightening. Yeah, absolutely frightening. I'm going to whip that cutter out. So that's the uh, 63 wide axe cutter with some good quality bits in. I'm going to give it a go, but I don't hold any hope out whatsoever. I'll get it mounted. Right. Okay, so 63 mil cutter, one, two, three, four, five inserts, 1000 RPM, 0.15 of a mil depth of cut. See what happens.
I don't think that was 0.15. I touched it off, but obviously not properly. Can't have been point one. Right. So after that, um, that run with that nice five insert, uh, nice cutter that made a lovely job. I'm, I've taken that out. I've swapped the arbor over onto this one. Um, and we're going to give that one a try with those round cutters in. I'm sure somebody will tell me what they're for and why they're round, whether it's for a different type of cut, I don't know. Deeper plunge, I've no idea. I'm not going to do anything silly, I'm just going to try exactly the same type of cut. Um, I'll get it mounted and I'll come back. Right, depth of cut, same, 0.15. I did just dip it in, so it won't start right at the beginning. There we go. in again them little fine lines but still lovely and uh, chromey looking excuse me I'm getting ready for another pass okay another pass
that's the six insert cutter, that's the round thingy with them round cutters in. Temperature. Twenty-five degrees on the face on the black bit. Twenty-two cutter temperatures. Twenty point nine. Twenty point nine. I'm confident that all of them are touching. I don't think there's a problem with that. Twenty point four. Yeah, they, there's no wrong with them. Twenty point nine. A little bit more aggressive on that cut. Still a nice smooth cut. But uh, I've got to admit that second cutter was that wide axe is, is performing better than any of these I can't vouch for how sharp this is though because uh, it's used and it has been used with them cutters in so it could be that they're on a, an edge that's been used quite a bit still cutting well though in fact I don't think I'm far off my line oh, I've still a bit to go I've still my bit two mil to go on there we're taking four off, so I've probably taken two mil off with what I've been doing so far. Right, I'll knock it off and do another run. Well, I've done four passes now with that cutter, and it's quite good, and it's making a nice job, but it's noisy. Um, and when I went to 0.2 of a mil depth of cut, it was noisier. I'm going to take that back out and put the best cutter in, the, uh, that one with five inserts in, and give it another try because that seemed absolutely superb. So I'm just going to quickly swap it over. I'm a bit slow with it because I've, I've only got uh, two 22 mil arbors. I'll do with some more 22 mil arbors. I've got a 27. Uh, they're, the, they're just the Chinese ones, but the ones I've got, they're absolutely brilliant. They're so accurate. I was tramming the, the head and I tried all sorts, in, I, I made a mention of it on Model Engineering Forum, that I tried all sorts of different chucks and various other things in to hold a, a piece of bar to go across here so I could swing a DTI round to, to tram the head. Put one of these in, put the uh, DTI on the side, it will bang on, put it on the face underneath, which is the face I needed, absolutely spot on, rotated it slowly. I'd be lucky if it were a quarter of a thou out, it were absolutely beautiful. Um, I don't know how to do it for money, but there's no wrong with them, I they're great. So I need to get some more of them, and then I can have all the cutters all ready up and then just swap them over quickly. As quickly as I can undo the, uh, the rod. Right, I'm going to swap them over.
level at 10,000. some crap in this steel because there's some there's some marks appearing here and I can only assume it's crap in the steel because it's not from cutter and we'll do another 10 there or that put it in thousands and I've been extremely ambitious here because I'm uh, I've got that at uh, No, 15.15 thou, deepest I've cut so far, 0.385 millimetres. I'm going to give it a try. Chips. I'm making bigger chips, which it would do, wouldn't it? Other than that, it's uh, it's coping fine. So I think these cutters are just obviously much better quality than the other one I've got. Or the inserts, it, it might not be able to do with cutter. I mean, a cutter's a cutter in it if it's been made right. It could just be the uh, the inserts on these that are quite good, and we're dealing the inserts that are good, quite possibly. I'll, I'll uh, zero that, take it back up to 0.385 and we'll do it again. Three. Oh, a nip. That's 395, it's gone to. So it's 15 and a half thou. Not done a pass this way at all with anything like this. Quite confident though. It's proving our 63mm um, face mill with multi inserts in and a little horsepower motors is managing it. Surprised me it really did from comments I've had I didn't think it would. See me like. I think that's it. I'm done. I might just take one first pass back over, but 
no temperature out there, definitely a, a very, very good cut of that. All those inserts, super sharp. They are sharp though, they, they are slightly sharper on edge than those other ones are. I'm not saying they're silly sharp. You'd have to dig in pretty hard to cut yourself. I'm not going to prove it though. So, that was point 0.4. 15.74 thou, 0.4 of a millimetre. I'm happy with that, I'm not going to go no deeper. I'm, uh, I'm pretty well chuffed. So, anybody who's watching this or watched it, I'm going to watch it uh, beforehand, thank you. Um, I suppose it's, it's easy just to stick a... Most of the comparisons I seem to watch on YouTube is with a face mill or a, a slot cutter, end mills, uh, fly cutters especially. You get loads of guys come on, I'm going to cut this and I'm going to do you know, two millimetre depth of cut, I'm going to do so and so, and then he goes away and he comes back with a block of aluminium. And he puts it in and he's proud that he's cut a block of aluminium. Well, I mean, that ain't no test for nothing, is it? Anybody can chew a piece of aluminium. It's when it comes to something bloody hard that's your problem. Uh, and not many people seem to advertise cutting or show videos cutting anything hard. Only your, your big companies like your Tomac and your Haas and them, and they've got these machines with 350 horsepower and cutters as big as your head and stuff. But for small machining, uh, I'm really chuffed with that. I'm glad I got them. So thanks again, yeah, for watching. Yeah, I've got a little bit more to cut down on some of these. I, d I put tools in and tried them and we're just above centre right on the lathe. So I'm, gonna, I'm taking a bit more off them. But I'm using that really good cutter and uh, the results are a lot better. Odd sparks, but not bad. Sparks, but nothing like the other tool did. The chips are bigger. The fish is no bigger, but chips are. to my line, need to go a bit more. Uh, nibbling away at that. 13 point millimetre. Well, point three three five millimetre. That seems to be alright on that. down on my mark. Taking deeper cuts does drag a bit look on top. When I take finer cuts it, uh, it's polished. That's got scuff marks on. Okay. But that's using that cutter. It's a lot better. 63mm. It works though. So 
So I won't play getting rid of that one. So yeah, I think I've got the results I required. So I'm using this cutter. So what have I got? I've got um, 0.245 millimeter, just under 10 dial cut. And that speed I'm running at. If I go much over a thousand, it does spark a lot. Keep just under a thousand, it doesn't. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm, uh, I've quite a few of these tool holders to do. I've got all them to cut down, but only very light. I've remarked them, so the ones that need. You can't even see them out, can you? See that one about a millimetre to come off. Yeah, other ones just want to skim over. The, the original ones I did on the lathe, so I'll get a nice finish on them. Okay, let's give this a fly. They're all locked off, red in that way. generally but they've got them scuff marks where it runs on and off dovetail. So I'm gonna do a right light pass and see if it polishes them off. So I'll zero that and I'll come up point one. There you go, point one ten. Just no is it? Four thousand, just over. We'll come up, come back over with the light pass. Bit of juice on, and see if it polishes that up. Can't believe how quiet it is. Though. I mean, our that's not much difference the passes that we're doing on that original cutter that I had. That is scary. I can only assume it wants new uh, inserts. I'll have to look through my box and see what's the best ones. Because that's cutting through that like butter. And there's still a few scuff marks on there. No matter. finish I think that's it for that one yep down to my mark don't want to go taking too much off because I don't want to weaken them and we got you know, you're clamping a tool in there with the Allen screw from the other side, so you're pushing on that base there. Oh, still a lot left. Looks like probably seven or eight millimetre left there. <coughs> I can't see it bending it. I've got a 12 ton press there, and I tried to bend one. Uh, I gripped it right on its ends, I gripped it right on its edges there and there. And I pushed in the centre and I put a little face on it so it pushed just in a, a point, trying to squeeze them dovetails up, thinking if I just nip it, it'll uh, it'll do it. And I pushed that thing there until it just bled out. It didn't leak, it just won't pump anymore. 
and that's 12 ton and it won't bend then oh, i must be flaming hard right right this is um to show what it's like on mild steel because i know they're probably mild steel or them other um holders i've got but they're hard and then this in this is one i've made i'm just going to take another bit off it this is an unfinished um piece as the bar came um that side had never been touched i'm only doing a light pass on it <clears throat> 0 0.16 which is what i'm at six yeah six point three thou so it's nothing quick skim over the top just see what it's like do i get sparks will it cut a lot easier i think it'll cut much easier than the other stuff but let's give it a go I locked up. Yeah, well, I locked up. The M1A that. Oh, it's fucking nuts about that. Oh God, that's cutting through that. Like it with a piece of aluminium. It's a speed with that, 923. Wow. Freezing cold. Not a bad finish, but uh, a funny feeling it hadn't even gone down to the original there, uh, where the bar came. I might just do a right light pass just over it. Zero. I am using cutting oil. I'm not pouring it on in big little tons though. That is so much quieter. I bet that uh, Chinese cutter I used originally had eat this. I think it was only struggling a bit because it was uh, so hard. And the inserts probably weren't that good that were in it. Well chuffed. Again, absolutely clap cold. No point in even probing it. That'll do for that. Lovely.